This video, well, it's about the thing that's keeping you all in your homes at the moment and crashing the world economy. I won't say the word because this platform, well, it's got a tendency to censor when it goes against their social engineering goals, but I think you all know what I'm talking about. Uh, and I'm gonna warn you too, this video is gonna be like 600 seconds instead of 180, so uh, we have a lot to cover and I hope that's all right. I'm sure everyone knows the story on where this virus supposedly originates. Well, you know, at least from the perspective from the mainstream media. Basically, someone bought a bat at a market and they ate it, and that's the established story. But if you're paying attention, there seems to be a heck of a lot going on that contradicts that. And the information in this video, well, I gotta say, it's probably not gonna be surprising to a lot of people, especially those who research and stay away from mainstream media news sources. So I have a couple questions that we dove into with uh, blind, non-local image streaming. Blind because we don't know what we're viewing beforehand. And also, the work we did here, well, there are areas that can go granular, deeper, but for the sake of this, it's just gonna be this 40,000 foot view. So the first question was, describe the origin of this specific virus, and that would be basically, where did it come from? The ultimate answer that we want to get to is, is this iteration from a bat and nature, or is this from a lab? There are more questions that we will get to, but first let's just deal with this one. The viewers describe this sterile environment in an interior structure. It's, it's very small, it's contained with equipment that feels scientific. Uh, there are different color lights inside this structure with multiple subjects working tightly amongst each other. And there are these um, small cylinder-like objects like tubes or test tubes laying around. It's basically stated as being lab-like and technological. So that was quick and you get the picture. The answer to that question is that it does appear from our data that this iteration is from a lab. So now that we've established that, the next question would be, is this an intentional or accidental release? In the data, we have multiple groups of subjects uh, in a secretive and authoritative structure. It's this hierarchical structure. These subjects have a very, very strong determination of pushing forward with a plan, a very determined and serious focus in one singular direction, as well as this urgency to accomplish something before time is up. Uh, this intention is described as not being love and bliss, okay? There are lots, they've got a lot of anticipation and expectation behind this plan. Ultimately, the viewers state something is planned to happen and it is very deliberate. So in my mind, that becomes the second question answered. This is a deliberate release and it was planned out. So what does this tell us so far? Okay, number one, it's been created in a lab. Number two, this was a deliberate release. Um, okay, if this wasn't totally weaponized in the lab, then it was weaponized with this intentional release. So is this shocking? You know, I think a lot of people out there, uh, they pretty much suspect that this is at least a lab-based virus that got loose, but you know, accidentally, because most people are good and they would never think that well, someone would release something like this on purpose. But all this leads us to another question to be answered, and that is the why. You know, why would someone, especially what appears to be this multi-layered group of people in a hierarchical and authoritative structure do this? You know, this is not some lone wolf crazy person doing this. This is a much larger organization with goals. So let's have a look at the why. From the data, these people are described as being in the shadows. They're not wanting to be seen or heard, but they are paying close attention. They're observing, they're witnessing uh, from their place in hiding. The hierarchical layers of subjects are in significantly different locations with the main central subject being the furthest away from the epicenter. And this is described as being international. One side of the intent here, well, it's to create disaster to do something horrible. One viewer states, there is not a good feeling here. The plan is to do something that is going to end up horrible and domination is the agenda to dominate. The group is described as 
full of superiority and elitism with no compassion. They're very cold and sterile. The plan is for no equality but hierarchy. It's described as this agenda for the future, to control the future. The ultimate outcome sought is alignment to a singular vision, the consolidating and bringing uniformity forward. And this is basically stated as not equality, but hierarchy. One viewer flat out states, this is for one rule, one law. Another viewer gives this personal reaction to what it is they're sensing and feeling during this. And they say, basically, I'm sensing everything in my body does not want this to move forward. It's going to cause destruction. It's horrible. There's fighting against it. And not everybody wants this, but the ripples from this will affect everything on earth. Now there's this other side that came up uh, as another aspect to the overall intent. It's kind of interesting, you know. And this was described as a way of preventing something else from occurring, something that is like a force of nature, something described as being unstoppable. This force is impacting this organization and they consider it a massive dangerous force. There's momentum coming at them and their plans, which have been in place for a long time, um, that is impacting and tr stopping them. One viewer describes the outside force from the perspective of this authoritative group that wants one rule, one law, and they basically say, it's gonna happen, it's gonna hit like a tsunami, we gotta make the decision now, people will die, there will be negative consequences, but the force is coming, uh, it's considerable, enormous, and unstoppable, and it has to be reckoned with. So, what does all this mean? Well, I'll nutshell it. According to our data, this was created in a lab and was intentionally released, which makes it a bioweapon. The ones who released it exist within this very authoritative and hierarchical structure. Their plans have been in place for a long time and they're threatened by this other force that is akin to an unstoppable natural event. You know, they're using this release to try and stop it and then manage what happens afterwards. The ultimate outcome that they want from this release is literally one rule, one law. You can probably guess from the statement of one rule, one law, as well as the statement, this is not about equality, but it's about hierarchy and authoritative control as to who or what this may be. You know, this ultimately is an older control structure that is being threatened by a newer structure. This older structure well, they're trying to figure out how to get their plan and intent for the world back on track. And they're using this virus to do it. You know, it reminds me of a lot of globalism or the new world order. You know, the phrase, you know, never let a good crisis go to waste. But in this case, I think it is create a crisis and then use it to take control. When populations become frightened, you know, people are willingly going to give away their power and their rights for the government to impose some form of safety. You know, Henry Kissinger, one of the biggest pushers of creating a uh, new world order, world government, said in a Bilderberg meeting in 1992, today Americans would be outraged if UN troops entered Los Angeles to restore order. Tomorrow, they will be grateful. This is especially true if they were told there was an outside threat from beyond, whether real or promulgated that threatened our very existence. It is then that all peoples of the world will plead with world leaders to deliver them from this evil. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. When presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished for the guarantee of their well-being granted to them by their one world government. None of that sounds good to me. And you know, I think it's time for people to wake up, but the waking up is more than just paying close attention to what's happening in our world. It's waking up to the continual human drama, both inside and out. This is something that's been going on for a long time and something that will continue in some capacity probably forever. You know, it's like waves on the ocean. They go up, they go down, it gets stormy, it gets sunny. You know, what if you went beneath the water instead of being tossed by the waves of human drama? You know, you, you find that, that still point within you. You know, within that, you have total clarity. 
The big thing that we all have in common here too is that no matter if you're Henry Kissinger, an employee of that secretive super state that wants one rule, one law, or a regular working American, it's at the end of your life, every single one of us has to let go of everything. And why not begin during your life, especially within the biggest drama that you could ever conceive of, this. I'm not saying ignore, and I'm not saying don't take action because awareness takes in everything, but it also realizes that all things come from nothing and they go back to nothing. When you begin to move in this direction, then you can feel when something like the mainstream media or an authority figure is engineering thoughts and feelings of the people for an outcome that someone else wants. Thank <laughs> you.